Hi. So um, I wanted to do some videos uh, looking at um, developing a gel electrolyte um, that can be used um, inside batteries. Um, so um, what I'm thinking of doing is, is using these uh, little plastic shot glasses you can buy from uh, supermarkets and stuff like that um, in order to developing the cell. And in terms of the electrodes, um, I'm just using uh, some aluminium foil and some copper foil. The copper being the stuff that they sell for um, stopping slugs eating everything in your garden. And the aluminium stuff they sell, um, hardware stores, that kind of thing. Um, now, in order to make the gels, um, I've started having a look at um, this um, stuff that they sell. Um, for weight loss. Um, now I bought this um, in Poundland um, here in the UK and this is um, an appetite suppressant and you, you buy these for one pound and you get about 15 capsules in here. Um, now this contains a substance called glucomunum if I pronounce that properly and effectively what it's meant to do is is that you're you're meant to swallow these and um, it kind of reacts with the, the water um, inside your stomach and it kind of expands and gives you this sense that you're full. So <clears throat> when you actually mix this together with water, you actually end up with this stuff here. Um, as you can see, it kind of looks like wallpaper paste. Um, now, I mean, this is, I think, sort of similar to wallpaper paste, but obviously this is uh, derived from um, a certain plant. But what I did think is that this actually um, could be quite an interesting um, material to use um, as a um, beginnings of a gel electrolyte. Um, so in terms of the electrolyte, what I've started looking at is um, what we've got here is calcium chloride. Now, again, uh, if you're in the pound shop in the UK, they sell these um, moisture traps um, and they, they come with these little beads. So I basically blitzed these inside a grinder and turned it into a powder. Um, and then I'm basically mixing that um, into my test cells um, with the uh, glucomunum. So what I want to start with is just building something very simple, um, which is I've got some cells here that I'm going to talk about now. So the first one here is um, basically it's uh, distilled water. So just the common garden variety that uh, you can pretty much buy anywhere. Um, and it just, there's about 20 millilitres of um, distilled water in here. And um, there's about three grams of the calcium chloride kind of mixed up. And then we've got the aluminium uh, foil on the negative and the copper on the positive electrodes. And um, basically, you can wire this up into my uh, DC power supply. Now, these things are pretty good because um, not only can you set the voltage, um, but it also is giving you quite a good indication of how much current the cells are um, using and um, allows you to kind of fine tune that as well so that you can obviously restrict how much it's doing. Now, I was originally using... Um, just some double A batteries uh, connected in series to try and step up and down the voltage. But obviously, you know, when you're charging these cells and they can be pretty sensitive, um, you know, you find that having something like this is, you know, if you want to start doing this seriously, is um, pretty, you know, useful to have. So this one here, this is um, costs about £50 um, off eBay. Um, I mean, it, it's a pretty common one, goes up to 30 volts. Um, and can do about uh, 10 amps but obviously you've got the, the dials down here so you've got this one down the bottom for restricting the uh, the current flow and obviously the, the voltage on top so you can just turn that and uh, turn it up and down so you can see as I twist it it goes up and down so yeah so let's um, have a look at these cells then um, give them a charge and uh, let's see what they're going to do so 
Here we've got the first cell I made, which I said was just um, water and uh, calcium chloride. Uh, 20 millimeters of water and uh, 3 grams of calcium chloride powder um, from the um, uh, damp trap. Now, I've charged this a few times and uh, you notice it's kind of, originally it started off as a kind of um, clear, kind of slightly milky colour. But um, after giving it a few cycles, um, you notice it's kind of gone a funny shade of yellow. Um, now, I'm not entirely sure what that is, but I suspect it's um, possibly it could be chlorine, because um, obviously I'm um, putting the uh, calcium chloride in there and applying a voltage. Um, it's um, not, you know, only if you, I think you've got uh, hydrolysis going on with the, um, the salt, but then, of course, there's the electrolysis as well happening as you're applying the voltage. And it's kind of gone, uh, it's a funny yellow colour. Um, and you can also see that there's... Um, some discoloration happening on the electrodes. You can see that the uh, um, aluminium has gone black and uh, the copper has sort of gone slightly pink. But uh, it's also possible that this discoloration is basically some impurities that are sort of actually on the foils that's kind of leached into the solution. But uh, what we're going to do now is um, see the voltage in here is um, charge this thing up. Now I've got this, I've tried it around 1.8 is when this thing starts to um, take a charge as you can see that it starts um, drawing power um, and obviously you can start increasing it and the, the power increases. Um, I haven't really gone much above um, 2.5 volts. Um, I mean when you first build these, uh, this one in particular starts off around 1.1 volts um, and if you do a dead short on it you're getting around, well it's only about 2 milliamps. Um, but if you stick a charge on these, um, what you'll end up with um, is probably around 1.3 is where it sits. And uh, from this little pot, you can get about 50 milliamps out of it on a dead short. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't really last very long, but uh, we'll have a look at that in a minute. So I'm going to connect this up. Um, so here you can see uh, it's currently drawing about 100 milliamps. And then... As it takes a charge, uh, you'll start to see that that number starts coming down. Now, what you can actually see on here, because we're charging at quite a high rate, is obviously you've got some gassing happening on the uh, on the negative side. But um, if we watch the current slowly here, you'll see that it uh, starts to drop quite quickly. So yeah, we're already at around 50 milliamps, 40. And then that pretty much will go down to around 10 milliamps or so, eventually. What I do find is that if you're using the water, because um, um, given it's a liquid, it tends to be a bit more conductive and it kind of will just keep on drawing about 20 milliamps um, at that kind of a voltage. So I'm going to switch it off now. Um, And uh, we'll uh, wire it up to something and see what it does. Okay, so um, I've just uh, disconnected the leads from the uh, power supply. Um, what I've got here, these are quite cool actually, because um, in the UK they sell these um, uh, t electric toothbrushes. Now they're the kind of disposable type. And if uh, you finish using one, there's normally a AAA cell kind of um, is inserted in here. Um, and then obviously there's a kind of switch on, on here, switching these things on. And you've got basically a little tiny motor on here and you can see that it just, that focuses properly. It just has a, uh, a kind of off balance weight that kind of spins and that gives you the vibrations in the toothbrush. But yeah, what's quite good is, is once the toothbrush is uh, finished, they cost a, a few pounds here if you get them um, on special. Um, you, you can rip the motors out and, uh, you know, these things draw about 10 milliamps, these little things. So they're, they're quite good for testing these little uh, test cells. Um, so I'm going to connect this up to the positive, which uh, is in here. Bear with me because I'm doing this with um, one hand. And uh, while holding the camera in the other one. Right, so that's not going too well, but there we go.
and off it goes. Now, I mean, you can already hear now, you can hear the, the power dropping. So yeah, you, you don't get much charge out of this. But really, this is just a kind of baseline test for uh, this type um, of just using water and the salt. Okay, so that's died. Right, let's try the other one. Okay, so this is the uh, second test cell we're going to look at today. So this is the um, the one that has the glucomunum. Not sure I can pronounce that properly, but uh, yeah, you can see in here that it's uh, quite a nice consistency. You know, it's got this nice gel, um, and this this has been charged and discharged um, quite a few times. And what's interesting, of course, it's not really giving the um, the kind of yellow colour. Um, it's kind of looking pretty much like it did at the beginning um, and the electrodes seem to be in better shape as well and what was interesting about this is um i mean this has, again has about 20 milliliters of um the the mixture of water and the uh, glucomonum i should probably mention uh, the quantities because i forgot for this so this is using i think these are what 1000 um micrograms uh, and I find if you use about 50 millilitres of distilled water per capsule, you get, you know, this kind of quite thick consistency. So that's pretty good. So I've got 100 mils in there uh, with, with two tablets. Um, and hopefully that get, gives me enough to play around with for now. Um, it's probably worth keeping this stuff in the fridge as well, because um, if you do leave it out um, for a couple of days, I've, I've tried it before and... It might start to go mouldy, so it's probably better off to keep it in the fridge, and it will obviously last a lot longer. Um, so, let's see if we can get that on there. So, there's the cell. So, I'm going to hook this one up, and again, you're going to see a similar pattern of where you can see that the the current draw ramps up. So, again, I'm doing this at 2.5 volts um, thereabouts, and you can see now it's doing about 90 milliamps, and um, just leave it on the charge. And uh, should see that it starts dropping. So what's interesting is this this one actually um, takes quite a bit longer to charge than the one with the water. So you can see that it's um, still taking 80 milliamps um, and it's not dropping down as quickly, but it, it will eventually do it. So I think what we'll do is um, leave this and um, we'll come back once it's uh, kind of dropped down to uh, to zero. Okay, so that was charging for probably between one to two minutes. You can see now it's completely dropped off. So let me disconnect the cell. Um, if we actually look at the cell in here again, you can see that there is some outgassing on the uh, aluminium foil. Um, I mean, obviously that's something I'm gonna to have to look at later, but it's obviously it's probably not being helped being charged at 2.5 volts, because obviously the uh, higher the voltage, uh, the more kind of gassing you get. But what we'll do now is um, I'll take my little toothbrush motor uh, you see here and uh, we'll give it a go so I think when we were just um, trying the other one we we didn't get more than a, a few seconds um, out of that before it kind of died um, but if we try this one so if we plug that in sometimes the connections on it can be a bit temperamental and there we go I don't know if you can see that but if we put that on the uh, surface here You can probably hear that buzzing away as it's uh, vibrating. But yeah, I must say, um, with the gel and the um, calcium chloride, um, you can get this thing to run and this will, I mean, if, if you charge it up and do a dead short, I think it's about 1.335 volts. Um, that it sits at and then if you do a dead short it sort of is around 50 milliamps but um, plugging plugging this little battery as I said this is probably taking around 10 
10 uh, to 20 milliamps so uh, I haven't measured it exactly but um, it will quite happily run this uh, for uh, a couple of minutes until it runs out so yeah it's uh, not too bad so um, I've, I've got a data logger um, one of those um, ZKE Tech uh, data loggers that, that I bought from uh, eBay or AliExpress or I can't remember where exactly and I'm going to um, get that set up at some point um, and start trying to get some real times out of this and, and obviously you know start getting uh, generating graphs and whatnot so I can save those to start um, developing this electrolyte um, to try and um, see what we can do with it but yeah what's interesting in here is obviously um, you know we're not going to get huge amounts of power out of this um, it's quite a poorly constructed cell obviously um, there's nothing like a separator in this at all I mean it's literally just the gel and the two electrodes um, so I mean what's next is I'm going to start looking at uh, uh, the amount of the calcium chloride and start adding other things to uh, um, into the mixture like some carbons and active materials like that to uh, try and see, see what the effect is but yeah you can see the motors um, running slowing down a bit now but yeah it's pretty cool um, just out of this little thing um, that yeah you can get this thing to run for uh, a while anyway uh, thanks for watching cheers <laughs>